Hey, are you dealing with shoulder pain right now? And are you wondering what the heck is going on in there? Is it a rotator cuff tear? Could it be shoulder impingement? Or do I just have shoulder tendonitis? I'll be telling you the difference between these three common shoulder problems so that you can have a good understanding for what they are and what to do next about it. My name is Dr. David Midoff and I'm a specialist physical therapist at El Paso Manual Physical Therapy. This channel is dedicated to helping people stay healthy, active, and mobile while avoiding unnecessary surgeries, injections, and medications. Be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications for this channel so that you don't miss any of the helpful videos that we put out every week. I'm going to use this whiteboard in a second to draw you the differences and, and how to understand and, and get your head around these different shoulder problems. But real quick, let me just tell you some of the common things that you'll find with shoulder problems like rotator cuff tears, impingement, and tendonitis. Number one thing, obviously, is going to be pain, but specifically pain with reaching up, pain with reaching behind your back, and pain with reaching out with your arm extended, especially while you're holding something heavy. Another time you'll get pain is when sleeping at night. If, if you lie on that shoulder and compress the shoulder joint, sometimes that can be very painful for these type of shoulder problems. And the more severe shoulder problems like rotator cuff tears will even be painful at rest when you're just doing nothing. You could just be sitting around, having a meal, watching TV, and it hurts. But the less severe shoulder problems like impingement and uh, a tendonitis tend to not be as painful at rest. They tend to be more painful with movement or with activity. And let me tell you about how they're different. With a rotator cuff tear, there's typically some loss of motion. It could be that it's just painful to get into certain motions like reaching up or behind the back. It could also be that you need help. Like if you assist your arm up with the other arm, it will go up, it just can't get there on its own. With both impingement and tendonitis, it's common to get neck problems and pain in this area or knots in this area of the body. This is called the upper trap muscle, and that muscle can get quite tight or knotty whenever there's a shoulder problem going on. With shoulder tendonitis, there's typically a focal point in the shoulder, like right here it hurts or right here it hurts, and it's not as diffuse, meaning it's not spread around or it doesn't change too much. It's pretty consistently at one spot, whereas rotator cuff tears and impingement can be more diffuse. It can move around from the front to the back to the side, it can run down the arm a little bit, or it can be a combination of all those depending on how you feel and depending on the sever severity of it that day. What I want to make sure you understand today, I'm going to use a whiteboard for all three of these problems, a rotator cuff tear, shoulder impingement, and shoulder tendonitis are on a spectrum of shoulder pain. And the reason why they're on a spectrum is because they're all related. One leads into the next. One is a se more severe version of the one before. So on the left side of the spectrum here, what I'm going to put down for you here is shoulder impingement. So just for short, I'm going to abbreviate it, shoulder impingement. In the middle of the spectrum, you've got tendonitis. Tendonitis. And then on the far end, you've got a rotator cuff tear. I'm just going to write RTC. There you go. So on shoulder impingement what's usually happening is the space where the ball and socket live let me use my skeleton here for you and take them off so you can see right there you this is the space where the ball and socket is right under this overhanging bone it's called the acromion that's the the area that commonly gets impinged or, or pinched is another way to look at it but that space somehow gets um, decreased or pinched and that's what sets up the tendonitis in the area and eventually a tear. But what leads up to that, some of the symptoms that you'll see is neck problems and uh, upper trap, I'm just gonna write up UT, tightness, just gonna write tight and pain. And that will carry on all the way to rotator cuff tear if you end up going that far. Now, if this lasts for a while, what, the symptoms that you'll see is it just kind of aches and hurts. Certain movements will hurt, like if you're turning a doorknob or turning a key. Um, it won't hurt all the time. Uh, I, a common experience that people have had is they'll go reach for like a, a heavy coat 
and when they go pick it up, it, it bites them in that moment. But picking up something light, you know, like a pen or a marker or something is no big deal. Or also picking up something and turning it or maneuvering it away from their body, that can be pretty painful. And what you can gather from that is that it, this motion out here where you're reaching out and picking up something heavy or turning is just a lot of stress on the shoulder and it's becoming irritated in there. It's usually the rotator cuff muscles and tendons that become irritated. And that is what we would label an impingement situation. The reason why people get pain into the neck and shoulder in this upper trap area is because these muscles need to be strong and stable in order for the ball and socket out here to work properly. So oftentimes these get achy because they're being overused or they're just not being used appropriately. You can also have pinched nerves in the neck that set up weaknesses in these muscles and the rotator cuff muscles that eventually start to create an impingement situation in the shoulder joint. And if that impingement lasts long enough, if it becomes severe enough, then we progress into tendonitis. So in tendonitis, I'll, I'll use pink here. This is where you got a tender spot. Tender spot on the shoulder. It begins to form, or usually you can poke in there and find a, a spot that just gets you, if you're, and you might even wanna rub it out to get some relief. And this will keep going, of course, into rotator cuff tear. Um, but that tendonitis, what's happening is at the ball and socket joint where the, where the muscles meet the tendons and then the tendons meet the bones. Muscles connect to tendons, tendons connect to bones. That tendon gets overused or, or over compressed or irritated. And it's just like if you rub your skin really hard, you know, your skin's fine normally, but if you rub it for a while, you can take it for maybe a few seconds, maybe a minute or two, but after a while, it starts to get irritated and red. It may not break, you may not bleed, but it gets irritated. And if you were to do that for an hour, or if you were to do it several times a day for you know a few minutes at a time, you bet your skin would be irritated and it would probably take a little while for it to recover. Maybe a day, maybe even a few minutes, depending on how, how hard you do it. What you need to understand is with the tendon, it doesn't recover as fast as your skin does. Your skin recovers really, really fast if it gets irritated. As long as it's in a good healing environment, it should be minutes, hours, at most a couple of days. Tendons is more on the time frame of weeks to get over an irritation. So that's why tendonitis can last a while. And if you don't identify, if you don't figure out what the aggravating motion is or what the aggravating thing is, the thing that sets you up to get it and remove it from your situation, it's going to stay irritated. It's going to stay tendonitis. Tendonitis just means inflammation of the tendon. That's why it, it gets irritated, like I was saying. And if that persists, if weeks go by, months go by like that, then eventually that tendon becomes so irritated, as if you were to be doing this, that it will break. It will break open, just like your skin would break open eventually if you were to do this. You now, I might get a blister at first, but eventually that blister will pop open and there could be blood under there. Same thing with the tendon. You don't get an actual blister on your tendon. It just starts to break down and tear and that's what sets you up for a rotator cuff tear so when you have a rotator cuff tear typically uh, let's use green here you have a loss of motion and that's when it's serious because now you know usually leading up to this with shoulder impingement and tendonitis People can still do stuff. They can still function. They can get through, through their day. They can clean the house. They can typically work just fine. It might be concerning to them that they have pain, but they might even be able to take a pain medication, you know, a Tylenol, Motrin, Ibuprofen, something like that, and deal with it. But if you lose motion, if you just can't reach back there anymore, if you can't reach up, if there's things that you just can't do, some people can't even wash their hair or, or you know fix their hair or cook a meal because of their shoulder pain, that's when it's serious and ideally you don't want to get to this point where you've got a loss of motion you want to start treating the problem when you've got just a tendonitis or an impingement issue but if you're at this point where you're having difficulty moving your arm it's pretty bad you need to make sure you do something about it so i hope this makes sense to you i hope you better understand what a rotator cuff tendon tear is what an impingement is and what a tendonitis is here and how they're on a spectrum. And as you move along from left to right here, it gets more painful, more limiting, and more serious.
Now, the good news that you need to take away from this is that even if you've got a rotator cuff tear and you're you know, concerned you're losing motion, you still have an excellent chance at healing it naturally without surgery. The current research shows this, that people that get surgery versus people that don't get surgery and go through conservative care, which means physical therapy usually, they end up about the same six months later and even 12 months later. They both get more motion back and get a reduction in pain and they're, they're pretty good. So why even do the surgery? Now there are cases where it's pretty severe and there's, it's been going on for a while. Maybe it's not the first rotator cuff tear where you yeah, go get the surgery right away. But in most cases, you can get away with not having surgery and healing this rotator cuff problem naturally. Now, if you've got a rotator cuff tear and you're looking for exercises to do, I've got a video for you called How to Treat a Rotator Cuff Tear at Home. It's in the description below. You can find the link in there. And if you've got more of a tendonitis or a shoulder impingement problem, there's another link for our playlist covering a bunch of shoulder and neck exercises and stretches and tips and advice as well. And the reason why there's neck stuff in there is because, as I said in this video, you can get neck issues and upper trap problems that feed into a shoulder problem. So it's important to get that addressed as you're fixing yourself so that you don't end up taking it all the way to a rotator cuff tear. If you've got any questions on this, drop a comment below. We'll get to it as fast as we can. And I hope that you liked this video. If you did, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the helpful videos and tips that we put out each week. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye-bye.